avoid whatever pleases the throng avoid the gifts of chance halt before every good which chance brings to you in a spirit of doubt and fear for it is the dumb animals and fish that are deceived by tempting hopes they are snares and any man among you who wishes to live a life of safety will avoid to the utmost of his power these limed twigs of her favor by which we mortals are deceived for we think that we hold them in our grasp but they hold us in theirs such a career leads us into precipitous ways and life on such heights ends in a fall fear follows hope each alike belongs to a mind that is in suspense a mind that is fretted by looking forward to the future but the chief cause of both of these ills is that we do not adapt ourselves to the present but send our thoughts a long way ahead and so foresight the noblest blessing of the human race becomes perverted beasts avoid the dangers which they see and when they have escaped them are free from care but we men torment ourselves over that which is to come as well as over that which is past many of our blessings bring bane to us for memory recalls the tortures of fear while foresight anticipates them the present alone can make no man wretched how am i to know whether my sufferings are real or imaginary we are tormented either by things present or by things to come or by both as to things present suppose that your person enjoys freedom and health and that you do not suffer from any external injury today there is nothing wrong with it as to what may happen to it in the future we shall see later on the mind at times fashions for itself false shapes of evil when there are no signs that point to any evil it twists into the worst construction some word of doubtful meaning or it fancies some person's grudge to be more serious than it really is considering not how angry the enemy is but to what lengths he may go if he is angry but life is not worth living and there is no limit to our sorrows if we indulge our fears to the greatest possible extent so true it is that fear looks not to the effect but to the cause of the effect what i advise you to do is not to be unhappy before the crisis comes since it may be that the dangers before which you paled as if they were threatening you will never come upon you they certainly have not yet come accordingly some things torment us more than they ought some torment us before they ought and some torment us when they ought not to torment us at all it is indeed foolish to be unhappy now because you may be unhappy at some future time perhaps it will come perhaps not in the meantime it is not we are in the habit of exaggerating or imagining or anticipating sorrow there is an element of self-seeking even in our sorrow assume that what you fear may happen will certainly happen in any event let us think of everything that can happen as something which will happen both hope for that which is utterly just and prepare yourself against that which is utterly unjust whatever the trouble may be measure it in your own mind and estimate the amount of your fear you will thus understand that what you fear is either insignificant or short-lived what matter therefore how powerful he be whom you fear when everyone possesses the power which inspires your fear weigh carefully your hopes as well as your fears and whenever all the elements are in doubt decide in your own favor believe what you prefer and if fear wins a majority of the votes incline in the other direction anyhow and cease to harass your soul no one calls a halt on himself when he begins to be urged ahead 
nor does he regulate his alarm according to the truth that things we dread sink into nothing and that things we hope for mock us no one says the author of the story is a fool and he who has believed it is a fool we let ourselves drift with every breeze we are frightened at uncertainties just as if they were certain we observe no moderation the slightest thing turns the scales and throws us forthwith into a panic for truth has its own definite boundaries but that which arises from uncertainty is delivered over to guesswork and the irresponsible license of a frightened mind that is why no fear is so ruinous and so uncontrollable as panic fear for other fears are groundless but this fear is witless that which annoys us does not necessarily injure us but we are driven into wild rage by our luxurious lives so that whatever does not answer our whims arouses our anger we don the temper of kings for they too forgetful alike of their own strength and of other men's weakness grow white-hot with rage as if they had received an injury when they are entirely protected from danger of such injury by their exalted station they are not unaware that this is true but by finding fault they seize upon opportunities to do harm they insist that they have received injuries in order that they may inflict them utility measures our needs but by what standard can you check the superfluous there is a succession in our desires for one begins where its predecessor ends because desire must have unbounded space for its excursions if it transgresses nature's mean nature's wants are slight the demands of opinion are boundless natural desires are limited but those which spring from false opinion can have no stopping point the false has no limits we ought to see to it that we flee to the greatest possible distance from provocations to vice we should toughen our minds and remove them far from the allurements of pleasure much harm is done by a single case of indulgence or greed the familiar friend if he be luxurious weakens and softens us imperceptibly the neighbor if he be rich rouses our covetousness the companion if he be slanderous rubs off some of his rust upon us even though we be spotless and sincere what then do you think the effect will be on character when the world at large assaults it then it is that the height of unhappiness is reached when men are not only attracted but even pleased by shameful things and when there is no longer any room for a cure now that those things which once were vices have become habits because they have reached such a pass that what was once superfluous to them has become indispensable and so they are the slaves of their pleasures instead of enjoying them they even love their own ills and that is the worst ill of all show me a man who is not a slave one is a slave to lust another to greed another to ambition and all men are slaves to fear away with all these treacherous goods they look better to those who hope for them than to those who have attained them if there were anything substantial in them they would sooner or later satisfy you for it is not because my ambition was rooted out that it has abated but because it was wearied or perhaps even put out of temper by the failure of its plans we should belong to ourselves if only these things did not belong to us but we are eager to attain them at the cost of anxiety of danger and of lost honor personal freedom and time so true it is that each man regards nothing as cheaper than himself very often the things that cost nothing 
cost us the most heavily. Despise everything that useless toil creates as an ornament and an object of beauty, and reflect that nothing except the soul is worthy of wonder. It is disgraceful, instead of proceeding ahead, to be carried along, and then suddenly, amid the whirlpool of events, to ask, in a dazed way, how did I get into this condition?'